Okay, so the UCU is at a property that recently installed an ET controller, also known as a smart controller. Um, and basically how these systems work is that they use weather information, temperature, rainfall, um, to estimate how much water plants need. And they schedule the irrigation. They can schedule both how often to irrigate and how much water to apply. Um, there are two basic types of ET controllers, or main types, signal-based and on-site. Um, signal-based receives a signal from the company containing the weather data, while on-site systems use their own weather sensor, which you can see above us. And this sensor that we have um, has a temperature gauge as well as a tipping bucket rain gauge. And the tipping bucket rain gauge measures the actual amount of water that is collected. This is the controller. And in this controller, we're gonna program all of the zones. Um, ba basically, it asks us for inputs for each zone. What kind of plants being irrigated? What are the sprinklers that are being used to irrigate? how much sun the zone gets, and how much slope there is. And it uses all of those factors to determine the irrigation schedule along with the weather data. With this specific controller, it's pretty easy to program. It has a dial. Um, we're gonna scroll through each of those dial settings and set up the timer. It also has an English-Spanish button so we can switch um, all the writing on this screen into Spanish. Um, and we're gonna use these buttons as well for programming. The first thing we wanna do is set the date and the time. It's pretty easy, it's got a next and a back button and a plus and a minus. So to scroll through what's being edited, you use next or back, and then to modify it, use plus minus. So now we're gonna move on. The next thing it asks for is the zip code. It uses the zip code to determine some other factors that aren't determined on site, aren't measured on site. Um, length of day and those kind of things. We can also set this timer for, to, for watering restrictions. Um, in Miami-Dade we actually have two day per week watering restrictions. So we're going to choose by days of the week and then determine what days we want to allow. This is a property with an even address so it should be watering on Thursdays and Sundays. So we're going to block every day that we don't want to water. It also asks for a watering time, and this is just the window during which it has to get all of the irrigation done for each zone. So we want to set that for early morning. We want it to be done before 10 a.m. because that's also watering restrictions. It's not going to water the entire time that this is set for, um, but it has to get all of the zones done in that amount of time. It also asks for a grow-in watering time. And this is just for plants that aren't at full maturity. So you can set a zone for new plantings and say you have plants that aren't mature and it'll use this grow-in watering time. Okay, this controller has two different ways you can input zone information. Um, the easiest way is called the Zone Setup Wizard and it takes you through easy programming steps. It asks first the sprinkler type, and it gives you options, um, sprays, rotors, uh, micro spray, bubbler. Um, then it asks you soil type, and it gives you options for that as well. Slope, plant type, plant water needs, plant density, shade factor, and plant maturity are all in there. And each one has an option, so you scroll through until you find the plant type or the soil type that you have in that specific zone. Once you're finished with one zone, you can move on to the next one. So we're going to program Zone 10 for this property right now. Um, zone 10 was entirely irrigated using sprays. It had a mixture of plantings, grass and shrubs. Um, it's in full sun, there's no slope, and all the plants are mature. So what I'm going to select is the sprays for the sprinkler type. Loam for soil type, that's our best estimate based on conditions in Miami. Slope, I'm going to select 0 to 2 degrees. Plantings, I'm actually going to select the grass because it's about half the area and it has the highest water demand. And warm season, grass. Full sun for the shade and they're all established plants. 
and then it gives you a quick review of the irrigation zone settings. So this is the weather sensor for the ET controller that has been installed. And we're going to show you the two parts. First down here is the temperature sensor. It's got a shield on here so it, it doesn't get affected by solar radiation, sunlight. And on here is this whole body part is the rain sensor. It's actually got a tipping bucket in there. So each time one side of the bucket fills up, it tips and counts a certain depth of water. And it keeps tipping until, it has, until the rain falls over. And on top it's got a screen that can actually be taken off to protect from debris getting into the system. A good idea if these are mounted up high and birds might be interested in them is to apply some of those um, plastic spikes around the edge so that birds do not want to land on here and make a home. The property that was featured in this video recently received a green award from the city of Aventura. They were recognized for their efforts in energy efficiency as well as outdoor water savings using the ET controller. They installed the ET controller provided by the UCU as well as retrofitted the irrigation system to make it more efficient based on recommendations from the UCU during their irrigation assessment.